Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes, and welcome to my channel. Uh, for those of you who are passing by for the first time, I talk on a variety of issues. I look for little news items and I think, I wonder if this is going to be relevant. I wonder if this is going to be interesting. I wonder if somebody knows about this. And based on what I come up with, I decide to do a video. Sometimes someone sends me something and then I'll do a video because they've shown an interest in it and they too feel that it should interest others. Anyway, for my existing subscribers, you know me already. Thank you for your support and everything else. Um, today's, um, today's video, um, I was going through my news items as I normally do. And I thought, oh, I'm going to have a day off today. But oh no, what crops up? People in arranged marriages, they're going to be affected by immigration, new immigration rules. And it was about them having to live together for 12 months in order to qualify as a partner to pass immigration. Now, I don't know how many of you know much about arranged marriages, but I'm going to share something with you that I've kind of read and that I've kind of asked people about. But arranged marriages are different from forced marriages. Arranged marriages are where the parents seek somebody maybe in the family or somebody who they feel is compatible, whether it's through education, whether it's through, um, um, what do you call it? Is it sect? Um, not sect, but caste. Or, you know, um, culture and things like that. And they, they, they go into it with a view of if somebody is compatible on a lot of levels, the relationship is likely to work. It's not based on love like the Western tradition, but even then, having said that, back in old England, they did the same thing. You know, especially in the rich families, they used to find somebody who was um, kind of well off or who could keep them, you know, a good um, name to the family and represent the family well. And then they would grow in love afterwards. Well, arranged marriages are similar to that. They get married first, they get married first and they fall in love afterwards through um, love and respect and caring and having so much in common. They just naturally fall in love. And divorces are not common because, you know, they're not just, the couple isn't just marrying, it's the whole family. And the only way you can get a divorce is if there's abuse. That's the only way divorce is actually accepted. It's not that you can't get one, but that's where how it's accepted. And that's a bit like what's in the Bible, you know, if a man, unless a man commits adultery or something like that. But anyway, not going, not going there. We're talking about um, this new legislation. So let me first, uh, for those of you who don't know about arranged marriages, I've just written down a few notes that I'm going to share with you. Um, it's a promise to fall in love and love germinates from care and respect. Arranged marriages are built on compatibility, not love. Love begins after marriage. I think that's quite good, actually. You know, you just get married and then you fall in love afterwards. Like I said, you know, if the parents have made a good choice, like sometimes, like if you're watching some of these movies, um, was it, ah, oh, what was that movie? East. Ah, oh, I can't remember it now. But it's where... <laughs> the father was trying to marry off the sons and then he found these two unattractive big women to marry them off to in the end and the guy just ran off and you know it was so funny but that kind of gave us a very naive insight to what um marriage is about and i think that's probably because the the, the mother in that relationship was a white woman and so there was a, a mix of cultures going on there but assuming that both um, parents are of the same background and religion, they tend to look for a person who is compatible with their daughter because they want it to work. They want their child to be happy or their son to be happy. So they look for a family that's got a lot in common, that's, you know, reasonably well off, who can give their daughter a better life 
together than they can alone and also to take the children off their hands. Divorce is not an option unless there is abuse. Um, parents monitor the marriage and make sure the, cu the couple doesn't want to break up at the first hurdle. Um, the married couple is also accountable. Unlike Western marriages, they cannot leave a marriage at the drop of a hat. They need a solid reason. A woman in arranged marriage said, if it were upon me, I would, I would have found men based on their superficial aspects like fun, humour, looks, mannerisms, etc. But my dad looks for deeper qualities like sound character, honesty, simplicity, and hard work and it's worked out well for me i'm not an advocate of any particular kind of marriage i advocate only happy marriages irrespective of who has found your life partner whether it's you or your parents in the last eight years i've learned that any marriage traditional or modern requires these three things happy memories of togetherness make sure you spend good time with each other Forgiveness. Remember to forgive each other's mistakes and do not let the past affect your present. And a promise never to give up on each other. As long as you keep this promise, your marriage will laugh, will last. So this um, immigration policy. Um, let me see where it says it. It is in New Zealand. It's not in the UK, so you don't have to worry if you're in the UK but it's in New Zealand and okay let me just read it I should have had it here okay another thing in the UK arranged marriage is um, acknowledged and accepted but forced marriage is against the law in the UK and you have the right to say no if you're being made to marry someone you don't want to the minimum age for marriage in the UK is 16 and you have the right to choose who you who you marry, when you marry, or whether you want to get married or not. So there is a difference between forced marriage and arranged marriage. So I just wanted to put that out there. Um, the new policy changes um, apply in New Zealand. The message from the New Zealand first MP Shane Jones to members of the Indian community, which is quite disrespectful. Um, disgruntled with immigration policy changes, get on the first plane home if you're not happy. So this is like when people say, um, go, go to your own country or get out if you don't like it. It's a similar principle. A change in approach by immigration officials to partnership visas means Indians in particular are having a much harder time bringing their spouses to New Zealand. There has been a Pacific government directive to stop waiving requirements such as couples needing to have lived together for 12 months, a test Indian couples who have arranged marriages cannot meet. Because when, they, when they're having arranged marriage, they go, they... You know, it might be a couple of months. They don't live together for a year. But this new law, this new legislation in New Zealand is demanding that they have lived together for a year before they're allowed to bring their partners home. Because what New Zealand is saying is that if you don't know the person, you they're not a partner. So they're looking at it from the Western concept. They say it's not like in Kiwi, New Zealand, culture where you live together for three or four years and then get married. It doesn't work like that in India, said someone. Um, I'm surprised that immigration in New Zealand has failed to understand that after all these years. There were a significant number of Kiwi Indians affected because arranged marriages were so common. Some families force their children to marry because they think it's an important part of the religion or culture, are worried about the family's reputation and honour. In some cultures, also known as Izzat, um, want all of the family money to stay together, want to marry their children off in exchange for money. I think that means a dowry. Feel pressured by the community or other family members to follow traditions and want to keep the fam family values and honour. They also have um, arranged marriages in China and Russia and other countries, though, and forced marriages. They call it um, picture marriages or something. 
a lot of times our Indian fellow members, they don't want, they don't know who they're going to get married to. Quite often they go there for two to three months, they find someone suitable and before they get married, they don't live together. They don't hold hands, they don't kiss or anything. They get married and married life starts after that. I would just say to the activists from the Indian community, tame down your rhetoric. You have no legitimate expectations, in my view, to bring your whole village to New Zealand. And if you don't like it and you're threatening to go home, catch the next flight home. That is That was said by... Um, what is that guy's name again? The New Zealand MP, Shane Jones. Party leader and Deputy Prime Minister Winston Peters was happy to take the credit for a tougher approach to partnership visas. It was simple, he said. You're either a partner under New Zealand law or you're not. It's as clear as daylight. They're not partners. Full stop, he said. If you haven't lived with your partner and don't know your spouse, then you're not partner. Visas were being granted when they should have, when they shouldn't have been, said Mr. Peters, because Immigration New Zealand was not even observing the law and the rules. The government has also made changes to the parent category visa, including a much higher income test and a cap on the number of parents that can come in. Immigration New Zealand figures show 10 out of 87 applications for culturally arranged marriages marriage visas have been approved as of the end of August. 10 out of 87, that's not a lot. In the previous four years, more than half of all the applications were accepted. A national visa manager for Immigration New Zealand, Peter Elms, said that the department was mindful of cultural complexities and sensitivities, but must observe the government's immigration policy. Previous immigration officers had been able to use their discretion and grant partnership visas in exceptional cases, but that effectively stopped when they were told not to keep doing that in May, he said. That advice has changed things, particularly for Indians. Previously, if partnership requirements weren't met, a general visitor visa would have been granted in order to reunite the couple so they could try living together in New Zealand and use the time to meet the visa requirements. What we've done in May this year is we've recognised that these exceptions were becoming the norm and that's not consistent with government policy. Until the first half of the 20th century, arranged marriages were common in migrant families in the United States. They were sometimes called picture bride marriages among Japanese American immigrants because the bride and groom knew each other only through the exchange of photographs before the day of marriage. Mr. Elm said there is a policy in place to allow culturally arranged marriages, but government puts an emphasis on people living together. I don't believe this is a racist policy at all. It's a clear policy that's for all. The policies that we have in place for partnership are the policies for all non-New Zealanders, Mr. Elm said. The Indian community could live with restrictions on parents being able to move to New Zealand, but Barna said, but spouses being stopped was a step too far. Poverty is one of the main causes of forced marriage or arranged marriages for some poor families. The marriage of a daughter to a man who is better off is both a way of giving her access to a higher standard of living than they can offer and a way of securing a nest egg in return for a dowry. And there are different types of arranged marriages. They've got a consensual arranged marriage. Parents of guardians select them. The individuals are consulted who consider the consent and each individual has the power to refuse. Sometimes the individuals meet in family settings or privately before engagement and marriage as in Shidduk customs among Orthodox Jews. A self-selected marriage. Individuals, individuals select, then parents or guardians are consulted who consider and consent and where parents or guardians have the power of veto. 
you have an autonomous marriage. Individuals select, the parents or guardians are neither consulted nor have any say before the marriage. A bit like the Western culture, isn't it? Um, in the olden days, we needed our parents' consult, consent, didn't we? We'd go there and say, the ma well, the man would go to your parents and say, oh, can I take your daughter's hand in marriage? <laughs> I wonder if they, I don't even know. Does anybody do that these days? Ask the parents for permission? I don't think so. Anyway, now parents are lucky if they even get invited or involved in the wedding. Um, there are many kinds of arranged marriages. Uh, arranged exogamous marriage. Gosh, I don't know who gives them these names. Arranged exogamous marriage. Is one where a third party finds and selects the bride and groom, irrespective of their social, economic and cultural group. Arranged endogamous marriage is one where a third party finds and selects the bride and groom from a particular social, economic and cultural group. A, song, a consanguineous marriage is the type of arranged endogamous marriage it is one where the bride and the groom share a grandparent or near ancestor example of these include first cousin marriages uncle niece marriages second second cousin marriages and so on the most common consanguineous marriage are first cousin marriages followed by second cousin uncle niece marriages between 25 and 40 percent of all marriages in parts of saudi arabia and pakistan are first cousin marriages and that's why sometimes you see children who come out with deformities while overall consanguineous arranged marriages exceed 65 to 80 percent in various regions of Af north africa and central asia so, the bride and groom in all of the above types of arranged marriages usually do not have the right of consent. So, that's what you would call a forced marriage. An arranged marriage has the consent of both parties. It is recognised under English law. A forced marriage does not give the right to refuse and is tantamount to slavery. For an arranged marriage, the parties will often marry before having a long-term relationship. And that's what New Zealand has an issue with. They are saying now that Indians, if they want to bring their wives over, they would have, have, they have to show that they've lived with them for a year. I think it's a bit like in the UK, in order to prove that you're cohabiting with your partner, you have to have um, documents in um, both names, utility bills, council tax bills, um, tenancy, um, mortgage documents, that kind of thing. And that is what they're introducing in New Zealand. So for all of those Indians who are living in New Zealand who want to bring their, uh, their, sp their spouses home via an arranged marriage, they're going to have some problems. Anyway, this is just something, a piece of useful information, I think. And I hope you did find it useful. Bye-bye.